How's it going everyone? Ben here from Augment Guitars and today we're going to be applying a stain and oil finish to the Tele Parts Caster build. I love using oil finishes as they're really easy to work with and they result in a nice natural feel to the wood, which I love. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first job we're going to tackle is staining the body and neck of the Tele. Off camera, I mixed up a few stains that I think would complement the build pretty well. For the neck, I mixed up this rustic looking brown stain and applied it to a scrap piece of maple just to see how it would look. For both the body and neck, I used these concentrated Stumac liquid stains. I mixed the neck color with the medium brown and a touch of black. For the body, I wanted to stain it jet black. I once again used a scrap piece of wood to test out the stain color to get it just right. This one was easy as I just used a Stumac black pigment stain. To mix my stains, I use an assortment of old bottles and these small ball jars, which you can find at most grocery stores. For the stain base, you can either use a high percent rubbing alcohol or my personal favorite, Becol solvent, which is denatured alcohol. The reason I use these is they have a very small amount of water content, if any, so they don't really raise the grain like water does. This would ruin our 600 grit finish sanding job and we don't want that. For these stains, I use the beak hole solvent. After a few of the stain coats are applied, I like to finish them off with some quadruple zero steel wool to smooth things out, just in case any of the grain was raised. It can also help to very lightly take off some of the stain if you applied it just a bit too dark. When applying stains, it's a very good idea to wear rubber gloves as this will stain your hands for a few days, or even a week. Before we start the finishing process, we need to tape up the areas we don't want to stain. For this, I am just using some blue painter's tape, an X-Acto knife, and some scissors. This process is pretty self-explanatory. Just apply the tape where you don't want the stain to be and cut away the excess. Now that we have the fretboard taped off, it's time to apply the stain. To apply it, I am using a cutoff from an old white t-shirt. So let's give the stain a good shake, fold up our applicator, put a small amount of stain on, and evenly apply it to the piece. For the truss rod access, use a Q-tip to apply the stain. This works great on other hard to reach areas as well, such as cavities and in the neck pocket. After applying the first coat, I let it sit for a few minutes to evaporate. I then applied a second coat of stain to darken it up just a bit. Just keep applying the stain until you reach your desired color and darkness. I am happy with the color of the neck for now, so let's move on to the black body stain.
For the body, we don't have to tape anything off as we can apply the stain pretty much to all the cavities and everything. We are going to repeat the same process as before to stain the body. I like using these small ball jars as they hold the perfect amount of stain for one or two guitars. They also are shallow and have a wide mouth which makes it easy to dip in your applicator. Let's apply a second coat. Before we apply the third coat, let's hit it back with some steel wool. Now that we have the body and neck stain color roughly where we want them, let's finish them off with the steel wool. When doing this, ensure to place an old towel or a different drop cloth underneath your work area. The steel wool shavings will get everywhere and will get in your finish if you aren't careful. Also, when using steel wool, use gloves because it's kind of nasty stuff. It's a good idea to periodically vacuum up the shavings to manage the cleanup afterwards. Just follow the grain lines of the wood and use a light amount of pressure. Let the steel wool do the work. After smoothing things out with the steel wool, I decided to do one final coat of stain to finish it off. I want both of these pieces just to be a tad bit darker. I did one more coat, hit it back with the steel wool, and these look perfect. They are exactly how I imagined them. Up next, let's apply the oil finish. For the oil finish, I like to use a few brands and types. The first brand I like to use are these Crimson Guitars Finishing Oils. These are formulated kind of like True Oil but are a bit lighter and easier to work with. They don't build up as much as True Oil, but they provide a nice hand rub durable finish that feels great in your hands. Another oil I occasionally use is the Osmo Poly X Finish. It is a hard wax oil finish that is durable and easy to use. It is also water resistant which can be great for sweaty guitar players. The finish I chose for this build is Odie's Oil. I really like using Odie's because it's pretty much foolproof to apply. It's natural, smells great, and it's so safe that you don't even have to wear gloves when you apply it. I use a combination of the Super Duper and Original Oils, which results in a beautiful, natural finish that is also water resistant. After applying the Odies, we will finish it off with a hard wax to further seal and buff the pieces to a nice satin sheen. I usually use Odies wax, but if you want a slightly higher sheen, you can use this petroleum-based Renaissance wax. It has quite the toxic smell, but it works wonders. It also doesn't react with virtually any finishes, so it's super safe. They use it in museums for that very reason. So let's get to finishing these bad boys. We will first start with the thinner Odie's Super Duper Oil as it penetrates into the wood deeper than the original formula. To apply the oil, I like to use these white 3M Scotch-Brite pads. These have an estimated grit of around 12 to 1500 or so, and they lightly buff the wood as the finish is soaking in. 
Think of it as wet sanding with the oil. I like to use these pads with all of the oil finishes that I previously mentioned. After applying the finish, I will buff off all of the excess with a paper towel and then use a screw to hang it from my workshop ceiling using some scrap copper wire. So let's apply this finish. With Odie's, a little goes a long way. It is very concentrated and spreads nicely so you don't really need a lot. With the white scotch Brite pad, you don't really have to follow the grain or anything. It is really just buffing the wood so it doesn't make any deep scratches. After letting the oil sit for around 30 minutes or so, it's time to buff off all the excess. We will use a few paper towels to remove any leftover oil that didn't get absorbed by the wood. You want to ensure that you remove all of the oil as we don't want any of it to dry and harden on the surface. Phew, look at that. The finish is already starting to come alive. We only need one coat of super duper oil as it is just to initially penetrate and soak deep into the wood. So let's do the same to the body. It's the same process as before, so let's get to it. After letting it soak for about 30 minutes or so, it's time to buff off the excess. After removing all the leftover oil, I am very pleased with the look and feel of this finish. So let's hang it to cure for a few days. To hang the body, I use various hooks and fisheye hooks to hang it from my basement ceiling joists. The neck was hung from the aforementioned copper wire and a fisheye hook. Now that we're done with the super duper oil, the next step is to apply the Odie's Original. This oil is a lot thicker than the super duper oil. This is because the original formula has hard wax added into it, which thickens it up quite a bit. Before using it, it's a good idea to give it a good stir. We will be using another white scotch Brite pad to apply and buff in the oil. This is the same process as the super duper oil. For the original oil, I like to let it sit on the surface for about an hour or two, depending on the wood type. For more thirsty and porous woods, I wait the full two hours before buffing it off. While we wait for it to soak in, let's apply it to the body.
If you have never used Odie's oil before, I say give it a try. The smell alone is enough for me to use it. It's great. After using any of the Odie's products, it's a good idea to seal the cans with some Bloxygen. This is an inert gas spray that is heavier than air, so it creates a protective barrier right on the surface of the oil in the jar. This will prevent your oils from drying up or hardening. After waiting a few hours, it's time to buff off the excess oil. This will take a bit more time and elbow grease versus a super duper oil as it's a lot thicker. The neck is buffed off and wow, does it look amazing. It feels great too. Let's buff off the body next. The body looks great too. Really happy with how this is turning out. I mean, look at that sheen. I went ahead and put another coat of Odie's Original on and check out the final results. These look great and we haven't even applied the wax yet. I will let the neck and body sit for a few days to cure before applying the wax. I'm going to be using Odie's wax for this, but feel free to use your own. It's a few days later and it's time to wax it up. This process is pretty much the same as the oiling, but we will be using an old t-shirt scrap to apply the wax. Buff the wax in by using circular motions. After buffing it in, we will give it an hour to settle and harden up. Let's repeat the process for the neck while we wait. After letting both the body and neck sit for an hour, it's time to buff off the wax. I first use an old cotton towel to remove most of the wax. I then switch to a finer microfiber towel which produces a nice sheen. I let the body and neck sit for a few days and here are the end results. I love using Odie's because it always produces a beautiful and natural finish that looks and feels amazing. Plus it makes your whole shop smell like citrus. It's a win-win. And that just about wraps up this episode. I'm really happy with how the finish turned out and I can't wait to see this build completely assembled. It's gonna look great. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's more videos coming. In the next episode, we're going to be tackling the fret level, crown, and polish. So, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.